Interview is an opportunity. It's not a barrier. Your rest of application is evaluated on paper. Your previous work in medical school, your previous volunteering, your previous work in your pr uh, previous countries, like it's all on paper and you look great. Congrats, you got your chance now to come and show your personality, to show yourself. And that's the most important thing when it comes to accepting people to residency. Residency is a job and every job needs a personality, a person that can fit into the job. So take advantage of the interview and enjoy your experience. Let's understand the interview. Why after going through four years of medical school or six years of medical school, why all after this publication, why all after this volunteering, why all after this we still have to sit 20 minutes and get questions about who we are? The purpose of the interview. So first, it's the interperson and the communication skills that you have. You send your CV, you look great on paper. You have great grades. You have amazing volunteering experience. People wrote amazing things about you in the letters of reference. But now, who you are as a person. So that's one of the main purposes of the interview. Two, are you a person who is committed to the specialty that you're applying to? Do you have the enough maturity and sense of what really does it mean to practice medicine? What does it mean to apply and be in the residency that they're applying to? And how good you are to tolerate or be able to do residency. Third thing is, are you a person who they can work with at three in the morning? Residency, it's not walk in the park. Residency stuff, long hours, lots of working time, uh, nights especially. And literally, when you go to residency, your knowledge is important, don't get me wrong. But it's not everything. Like at three in the morning, let's say when you are in the internal medicine service and you're admitting your fifth or sixth patient with pneumonia, by your second or third month of residency, you will already know what's the certain of pneumonia. Like everyone will learn the bread and butter. And 90% of what you do in residency is bread and butter. But are you a person who is still willing to do some work at three in the morning when you've been working for 20, 26 hours? Or are you a person who's gonna be grumpy? That's what they care about. Because like everyone or most of the, like 90% of the people who are interviewing for a residency, they are at the same level. They have a great knowledge, they have great skills, they have a great background, they have, they've done lots of things, they have great time management skills, but are they a person who can do the job without complaining? And are you a person they can enjoy working with you when things really get tough? Also, one of the purposes is like to clarify any red flags or like anything that they were not able to clarify on your CV. The year of graduation, some professional issues, maybe low grades. It's your chance to give an explanation and it's their chance to understand why that happened. Also, it's the program's chance to understand, like, do you really understand why you are applying to a certain specialty? And how did you choose it? I interview many people on my YouTube channel, and the common theme is, whatever specialty you're applying to, the program director wants to know that you are born to do that specialty. No one wants to be number two. No one wants to be your backup plan. They want to know if you can handle the stress. Being a resident is really stressful. You're wholly accountable in front of your staff 
and when you're a senior, you are hold accountable in front of your junior learners, and also in front of your patients. But are you a person who can handle stress? And are you a person who can thrive in a fast-paced environment? Can you receive feedback? This is very important. The worst resident is the untrainable resident. Residency, it's a five bucks worth of training. Going to three years of residency means going to three years of training. They can't train a person who can't receive feedback. You're gonna do lots of mistakes. You're gonna learn from them. But are you a person who is receptive of feedback? Can you work on feedback and improve? Or are you a person you can't really you are not really good at accepting feedback and take things personally and you are not trainable. Can you accept your mistake if you did a mistake, if you hurt someone? Can you admit that? Can you talk to the patient and admit that? This is important. Unfortunately, when we compare to medical, sorry, medicine or healthcare to other industries, we still do lots of mistakes and physician errors are responsible of many morbidities, deaths, many side effects. But are you a person who can accept their mistake? They can admit their mistake and they can go and talk to the patient and admit their mistake. They can go and talk to the staff and admit their mistake. And they want to see if, what do you add to the program? Again, what makes you different? What makes you unique? Everyone who gets an interview for the residency, they have great grades, they have amazing volunteering experience, they have very, many research, like multiple research papers, but like, what do you add? Are you able to take a leadership role? Are you able to improve the program? Are you able to give back to the community? Are you able to make a difference? Are you able to stand up for other residents? Are you able to uh, lead a committee, lead a research work, lead, lead a research uh, project, lead a quality improvement project. So all this are the purpose of the interview. Of course, it goes much beyond this. It's, it's so complex. The first 10 seconds of an interview is very important. How you act, how do you react, how you smile, how you look at the camera, how you look at the person interviewing you are very important. But in a nutshell, those are one of the most important things when it comes to your interview. That's why you are doing an interview. Things to know before you interview. So interviews comes, I'm going to make things simple. I'm not going to tell you about 100 types of interviews. I'm going to tell you about the common things that you need to know about the types of interviews. Structured versus non-structured. Structured, when the person is interviewing you, they have a set of questions and they will ask you, those questions and for the next person after you they will ask the same set of questions and the person after you they ask you the same set of questions non-structured interview it's just like meet and read they want to know you who you are as a person research have shown that structured interview interviews are much better than non-structured one and they are more fair to judge different applicants and various applicants who are applying to residency also, in interview, you have behavioral and non-behavioral questions. Why they will ask you behavior? And what, what, what is a behavioral question? So, behavioral question, they will tell you, so, sorry, they will ask you a question. Tell me about a time where you had behavioral issue, like, tell me about a time where you had a conflict. Tell me about a time where you had a professional issue with one of your staff. Tell me about a time where you made a mistake. Why they ask you this? Because your previous behavior predicts future behavior. Or they might ask you non-behavioral questions. Tell me about yourself, who you are. Some interviews mainly focus on the behavioral aspect. They give you a scenario and see how you react in this scenario. Some, they really don't focus on this. They ask other types of, other types of questions. Okay, some interviews are open file. What, does, what that means, like, the person who is interviewing you already got your CV and read your CV. 
and read your personal statement and read your letter of reference. Closed file means the person who is interviewing you knows nothing about you. What my advice would be is you treat every interview as a closed interview. Why? Lots of times when they choose people to interview them, they send their CV and they send their personal letters and they send their letter of reference to a resident and the staff. Usually there is a per like a team of two members or a team of four or five or six. So they send your information to the person who is interviewing you. And the expectation is the person who is interviewing you should read your CV, right? But 99% of the time that doesn't happen. Maybe they are busy, maybe they are unrelated, and like sometimes like when I'm interviewing people, I just avoid opening their CV. I avoid opening their personal statement. I avoid reading about them. Because my main goal is to understand who is that person? What kind of personality does he have? Lots of times you might get lots of biases where you read this CV and it's amazing. And you go to interview that person, you might miss red flags. You might miss issues. Also interviews could be a panel where you go in a room and there is like four or five people interviewing you or it could be one to one or two to one. Only one person from the program interviewing you or usually it's a staff and a resident two interviewing you. Also sometimes I've interviewed are group interviews. So it's your job to understand what type of interview you will have with their program and the program usually you're applying to they will tell you the most common is just like the all normal plain interview where they ask you some behavior type of questions non behavior type of questions there are other types of interviews like the MMI uh, there are group interviews this is a course to help you to go through their traditional interview and I will give you more detail on how to approach a traditional interview in the coming slides.